What's up, everybody? I'm Ross Peterson, back in studio for this edition of Takedown TV, your weekly source for what's trending in the world of wrestling. Scott's in St. Louis for the NCAA Championships, so today we're going to take a look back at the historic 2016 Finals in New York City. It was an emotional 72 hours in Manhattan, filled with highs and lows, upsets and underdogs, and some of the most compelling matchups in recent memory. Coming off a sixth-place finish, Penn State advanced five to the title round, starting with senior Nico Megaludis, who was making his third trip to the finals at 125. Facing Iowa's Thomas Gilman for the second time this season, the four-time All-American capitalized on a late first-period takedown and right out to go up by two. Gilman opened the second with a quick escape, but Megaludis notched his second takedown midway through the period to go up four to one. Megaludis chose down to start the third period and escaped to a 5-2 lead. He would surrender a late point of stalling, but picked up another on riding time and took the match 6-3. This, this, I don't know, it, it's not even celebration, it's just relief. I don't know, I'm just relieved. I knew I was going to be the champion. It, it was a done deal a year ago when I had signs everywhere, you know, my room at Penn State my room at home, my bathroom at home, my wrestling room at home, my car steering wheel. I am the 2016 national champion. After finishing second in 2015, Iowa's Corey Clark clawed his way back to the finals to face four-time All-American Nashawn Garrett of Cornell. Garrett picked up the first takedown just 45 seconds in, adding 30 seconds of riding time before Clark was able to escape and cut the deficit to 2-1. Clark opened the second with another escape, but Garrett answered with his second takedown and held a 4-3 advantage at the end of two. The Cornell senior scored a quick escape in the third, but a second stall call brought Clark back within striking distance. Inside a minute left in regulation, Garrett hit the most important takedown of his college career and won his first national title 7-6. I'm excited that the outcome was uh, the outcome that I wanted, but you know, I did wrestle with a little bit of fear and anxiety. I didn't take as many shots as I probably could have, but uh, I guess I should focus on what I didn't do and focus on what I did do, uh, which was fought in the hand uh, hard. Uh, those guys are obviously really good at grinding people out, and that's how they win most of their matches. And, um, you know, I, I, I think I did what I needed to do in order to be uh, the man now. The 141-pound finals featured the 14th-seeded Cinderella from Wyoming, Bryce Meredith, against the top-ranked wrestler in the country, Dean Heil. Heil scored first on a takedown in the opening period and held a 2-1 lead heading into the second. Heil and Meredith exchanged escapes in the final two periods, and Heil was able to fend off several late shots to become the 140th national champion in Oklahoma State history. You know, uh, kind of one of, the, one of the main driving forces is to be plain and simple, nobody ever likes me. Nobody ever likes me, nobody ever gives me the respect that I feel like I deserve. And, you know, it, it, ever since middle school, I mean, time, ever since you've been watching me, no, every year people are always projecting other people to beat me. You know, it, it took me three years to finally be projected to win state, even though I was a three-time state champ, you know? I was always projected to lose at Super 32, and. You know, I was always projected to be second, always projected to be third, and you know, that always drives me. And you know, going into this tournament, being the one seed, I was projected to lose by Ashnall, by McKenna, by Ward, you know, it just, it, it, that is what drives me, you know. Always, always having people doubt me, and maybe, maybe this finally, uh, stops people from doubting me, but you know that that w that won't stop the fire burning inside. I uh, I always remember the people who always had my back. I always remember the people that that doubted me from the beginning, and that'll drive me from 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 eighth grade until forever. In a Big Ten Finals rematch at 149, it was Penn State's top-seeded Zane Rutherford facing Iowa's second-seeded Brandon Sorensen. Rutherford reached the title round with three pins and a tech fall, and his dominance continued in the finals, where he scored two first-period takedowns to go up 4-1. Rutherford carried a 7-1 lead into the final period, where he tacked on another takedown and a point for riding time to win his first national title by major decision. Yeah, I treat this every day. Um, 
I have a great coaching staff and great partners that push me every day. Um, you know, we got five guys in the finals, and I wrestle every one of them. You know, and even the guys that aren't out there wrestling right now, they're back home, second, third string guys. They work hard. They, uh, you know, they push me in summer training. We're going on runs and stuff, and just we push each other to get better, and we have fun in the process. That's a big part. More highlights from the 2016 championships after this short timeout. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Casey's General Stores. Stay tuned. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. It was the most anticipated rubber match in recent memory. Isaiah Martinez versus Jason Nolf, part three. An electric first period saw Martinez set the tone with a quick takedown, but the Nittany Lion freshman kept his composure, using an escape and a takedown to go up 3-2. As the first period came to a close, Martinez escaped to even the score at three. Imar opened the second with another escape and carried a one-point advantage into the third. Nolf chose down and tied the score, and this one appeared to be headed for overtime, but it wasn't. Martinez fired the match-winning shot with under 15 seconds left and captured his second national title, 6-5. to five. Wow. I'm uh, extremely pleased, you know, just with the win. Uh, wrestling a competitor like that, he's, he's definitely special. Um, and, uh, you know, he gave me a hell of a fight, and uh, I just knew, you know, if it, if it came down to the end, that I was going to get it done. And... Uh, Looked up at the clock with like maybe 20 seconds to go. Coach is just screaming, go get one. And I said, I need to do this right now to seal up the match. And uh, thank God I got, I got my head through the hole, got up and got the takedown. After storming through the bracket untested, the finals were not much different for two-time defending champion Alex Derringer. Facing the previously undefeated second seed Isaac Jordan in the finals, Derringer got the first takedown in the opening period and jumped out to a 5-0 lead with an escape and another takedown midway through the second. Jordan would score his only points on a pair of escapes as Derringer cruised past the Wisconsin sophomore 6-2. You know, there was a lot of emotions there, you know. I kind of was a little conservative, but, you know, in the situation I was in, it was hard to get over aggressive, you know. But and I was very pleased, you know, you know, I've got 18 matches in a row with the third national title in uh, the most historic arena in, in the world. So it's a pretty amazing feeling. During the semifinals, Nittany Lion legend David Taylor was asked where PSU freshman Bo Nickel needed to develop. Taylor responded by saying that Nickel put himself in dangerous situations, a tendency that would prove costly in the 174 pound finals. Nickel went for a double overhook throw off the whistle, but Martin countered nicely for the takedown. Two escapes and a takedown for Nickel, followed by a Martin escape, made it 4-3. to three. But Martin responded with a body lock toss, putting Nickel on his back to retake the lead 9-4. to four. The Nittany Lion freshman went on a furious comeback, throwing Martin twice in the third period, but it wasn't enough, and the Buckeyes got their first title of the tournament 11-9. to nine. 
Miles, that moment you were able to share with Coach Ryan and those close to you after you won, can you just tell us about that, how much it meant to you? Um, it meant so much to me. I love that guy. We, in the beginning of the season, we butted heads about the whole red shirt thing, but he cares so much about me and the team, and he understands where I come from. A small town in Pensgrove with not much there, so he like he understands all that, and he was able to support me if I needed anything, any kind of support, just to talk to him about girlfriend props, my father props, stuff like that. He was there, so just love that guy so much. We'll take you from 185 to heavyweight right after the break. You're watching Takedown, powered by Adidas Wrestling. Stay tuned. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. Cornell's second finals appearance came at 184, where defending national champion Gabe Dean squared off with Nebraska's seven seed T.J. Dudley. The three-time All-American took several early shots, getting to a leg three times, but only drawing a stall warning on Dudley, and the first period ended scoreless. Dudley chose bottom to start the second and earned a quick escape, but Dean secured his first takedown of the match, and the period ended with the score even at two. Dean took the lead on an escape six seconds into the third and kept up the pressure, scoring a late go behind to seal the 5-3 win. What's it say about your program that, you know, you guys got 20%, two out of the 10 champs. What's it say about Cornell wrestling and, and how fired up are you right now? I'm really fired up, actually. I'm containing myself because uh, I have to be professional. But, uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, man, what... From where we started to where we are now, um, as a group, um, I remember coming into Cornell when I was a kid, um, getting the crap kicked out of me every day by Cam Simons. Oh, and uh, I guess it's nice to be on the other end of that now, and uh, not getting my head shoved in the bleachers every day. But uh, the point was, um, you know, these kids, it, not just me, but my whole class, they kept coming back, and uh, had, didn't take no for an answer. And you know what? We didn't have a perfect NCAA tournament, but you know we got a lot of fighters on our team and a lot of support, and um, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Two years after winning the 197-pound title as a true freshman, Missouri's Jaden Cox made it back to the finals to face three-time All-American Morgan McIntosh. It was a feeling out process early. Cox nearly hit a takedown towards the end of the first period, but McIntosh scrambled out of bounds to keep it scoreless. The two traded escape points in the second and third period, but Cox was just moments away from adding another on riding time. 
With just 12 seconds left in regulation, the Missouri junior struck on a low single leg to secure his second national crown, four to three. I, I believe I, I, get, I had a great outing here at the NCAAs this year. It definitely improved from the last two years. Um, as for dedication for this title, it goes to everyone that's ever had my back. Everyone that has uh, you know, always been there, and not just when times like this happen, when things are great, but you know, everything, when everything's going wrong and things that you know things are hard, people that have your back, like that, and the people who, who are always there, and you know that you consider family, even though they're not blood. Those are what this dedicates to, because you know this wasn't easy. It was not an easy journey. You know, there were times in this year that I was very frowned upon by the social social media and social eye, and so to find those people, know you have those people around you, it's a blessing to have those kind of people. So. This goes to them because you know they kept me on the right track and kept my mind, you know, stable, and uh, you know they helped carry me. It was perhaps the most anticipated heavyweight match in college wrestling history, as two-time defending champion Nick Wisdowski put his 87-match win streak on the line against 20-year-old world champion Kyle Snyder. The match started with Wisdowski shooting for a single leg. Snyder did the same, but both came out of the scramble empty-handed and the first period ended with the score tied at zero. Wisdowski opened the second with a quick escape and started to take control of the action, hitting a takedown on a counter shot to go up by three. Snyder would not go down without a fight and escaped late in the second and early in the third to pull within a point. Just 90 seconds from his third national title, Gwizdowski struck again, hitting another takedown to go up 5-3. From that point on, it was all Snyder. With 11 seconds left in regulation, the Buckeye sophomore hit a low single, forcing the match into sudden victory. In a performance reminiscent of the 2015 World Championships, Snyder unleashed his arsenal when it mattered most, converting a clutch takedown for his first NCAA crown. Since my freshman year of high school, I've been targeted, and people have, uh, every time they wrestle me, it's uh, one of their biggest matches of the year. So I'm used to that now, and when I win something big, I, I don't relax. It makes me hungry. I want it again. I want to improve, and I want to do it in a more dominant way next time I wrestle in it. So um, the next thing is the Olympic trials in three three weeks, and that's a big competition for me. So I got I got a lot of work to do and a decent amount of improvement before that. Coming up, USA Wrestling's Richard Immel stops by with his 10 picks to win a title in St. Louis. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Nike Wrestling. Stay tuned. for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. When looking for a quality pizza, you need a place that makes everything from scratch, using fresh ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. And if you can grab a lotto ticket while you're there, well, lucky you. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. Welcome back to Takedown. He's one of the most respected minds in our sport. Here's USA Wrestling's Richard Immel with a breakdown of the brackets and his 10 picks to win a title in St. Louis. What's up, wrestling fans? Richard Immel here from USA Wrestling. I'm gonna break down some individual weight classes and my team predictions for the NCAA Championships coming up this weekend at the Scott Trade Center in St. Louis. 
We'll start at 125 pounds. I really like the top seed, Thomas Gilman, a hammer, coming out of Iowa, undefeated on the season. I like his path to the finals. Uh, he's been pretty dominant all season. I see him taking on Joey Dance, the number two seed from Virginia Tech, in that championship match. They've gone back and forth over the years, uh, but I like Thomas Gilman to get it done as a senior for the Hawkeyes. Moving up to 133 pounds, again, going with the top seed, the favorite in the weight class, the undefeated wrestler, Nathan Tomasello of Ohio State. Uh, he'll have a tough semifinal match against Corey Clark or Stevan Micic, most likely. Um, I like him coming through, uh, battle-tested, gritty, uh, just a hard-nosed guy. I think he makes the finals against Cade Brock of Oklahoma State, that Buckeye-Cowboy matchup. And uh, I like Nathan Tomasello to get the job done, take home his second title this year at 133 pounds. Moving up to 141, wide open weight class, very even across the board. I'm putting number one seed and defending NCAA champion Dean Heil in the finals. I have him taking on Stanford's Joey McKenna as the three seed. Uh, this time, I like McKenna uh, in a rematch. I know it's been close before. Heil, you know, he's the defending champion. He hasn't lost in quite some time. Uh, but I like Joey McKenna to get the job done and take home his first NCAA title as a sophomore for the Cardinal. Moving up to 149 pounds, uh, it's, a, it's an open and shut case for me. You got Zane Rutherford, one of the most dominant guys in the NCAA, undefeated, uh, and, and he's really cruising right now, coming off an impressive Big Ten Championships, technical fall over Micah Jordan in the finals there. So I like Rutherford cruising through to the finals. Uh, I see him taking on Oklahoma State's Anthony Kalka for the first place prize. Uh, they wrestled earlier in the year, it was a 2-0 match, close match but I like Rutherford to really separate himself in this matchup and, uh, and, pick, up, and pick up his second title uh, for the Penn State Nittany Lions as a junior. Moving up to 157 pounds, Jason Nolf, the human highlight reel. He's just been incredible to watch all season. I see him sweeping this weight class uh, with relative ease. I'll put Michael Kimmer of the Iowa Hawkeyes in the finals. I really like the freshman, what he brings to the table. Now moving up to 165 pounds, you got a two-time NCAA champion as the number one seed, undefeated on the season. I don't really see that changing. Uh, I see him making the finals. Has a tough semifinal test, most likely against Isaac Jordan of Wisconsin. Then he'll likely see Logan Massa of Michigan, the two seed in the finals. Um, and Imar's beaten Massa twice this year. I don't see that changing uh, in the NCAA finals, the big moment, the big show. That's where Imar shines and uh, he takes home title number three and attempts for title number four next year um, and what could be quite a record setting year for him. Moving up to 174 pounds, another one of these wide open weight classes uh, from the top side. I like freshman Mark Hall to come out of the top side. I see him taking down undefeated freshman uh, Sahid Valencia of Arizona State in the semifinal round. In the finals, I like Mark Hall taking out Bo Jordan of Ohio State in a rematch of that Big Ten final, both guys gritty, uh, both guys just, just battling out there in those Big Ten finals. Uh, but I really like the way Mark Hall got to his neutral advantages in that Big Ten final, and I think that really propels him over the top against Bo Jordan. Flips the script, and he wins his first title as a freshman for the Nittany Lions. We move up to 184 pounds, perhaps the deepest weight class in the NCAA. My personal favorite weight class to watch. Um, I'm putting Gabe Dean, who's just been on an absolute tear, a two-time NCAA champion. He's going back to the finals, and I see him taking out Bo Nickel, uh, the Penn State sophomore, number two seed, uh, NCAA finalist a year ago, and I think he finishes in that same spot, second place. And it's just a case of circumstance. Gabe Dean going for his third title and really cements his case uh, to win the Hodge Trophy this season. At 197 pounds, Olympic bronze medalist, number one seed, undefeated on the season, two-time NCAA champion, Jaden Cox. He's the man to beat at this weight class. And uh, given his experience, uh, I really see Jaden coming out on top, having the best tournament, uh, having the best NCAA tournament of his life, and really putting a, a rubber stamp on his career as one of the best college wrestlers we've ever had. And the last weight class, 285 pounds. I have the Olympic champion, the reigning NCAA champion, uh, the baddest man in college wrestling, Kyle Snyder. Uh, I think he's gonna cruise to a title here at heavyweight, pick up his second title. I'm putting Ty Walls of Virginia Tech in the finals. I think Walls has uh, close the gap with number two seed Connor Medbury over the season. Uh, I like I like Wallace to reverse the trend against Medbury in the semifinal round to get his crack at Snyder uh, for the first place prize. When it's all said and done on Saturday night, I have the Penn State Nittany Lions hoisting the team trophy. 
I think bonus points really are what going to make the difference uh, for Penn State. A couple teams in consideration, Oklahoma State and Ohio State, I think can make it close. Maybe even pull the upset if one or two things go their way. Um, and Iowa and Virginia Tech will round out my top five teams. So with that, it's going to be an exciting weekend of wrestling out in St. Louis. Uh, be sure you check out all the action. Uh, thanks to my takedown boys for, for having me come on the show and give my thoughts. Um, and uh, we'll catch you in St. Louis. Special thanks to our friends at USA Wrestling, ESPN, and the NCAA. Don't forget to join us on TakedownWrestle.com and Facebook for live audio coverage from the 2017 Championships in St. Louis. For Scott Casper, Tony Hager, and all of us here at Takedown, I'm Ross Peterson. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.